The seven star for alligator terror raid event is coming to Scarlet and Violet later this week. In today's video, we'll look at all the event details, what makes for alligator such a threat in battle, and some of the best builds to help you prepare for when this event goes live. This event will have its first time out from the 1st to the 3rd of November and will return for a second time out in Scarlet and Violet from the 8th until the 10th. For alligator is one of the two remaining of first partner Pokemon that we have left to feature in seven star raids, and this time out for alligator going to be appearing with. With the mightiest mark and what we can look out for is for alligator is going to be at its base typing a water type so expect those sorts of moves base stats are pretty interesting pretty even across the board but it does have a bigger attacking and defensive stat in comparison to everything else of course because of the dark terror typing that it is going to have in this raid it is going to have weaknesses to bug fairy and fighting types so they're primarily going to be the types that you're going to want to look at when going into this raid like previous seven star terror raids it's probably going to have access to its sheer force hidden ability sheer force increases the power of moves that have beneficial secondary effects by 30 percent but it does remove those additional effects now, the big moves that we're going to have to watch out for in this raid are going to be water and dog type attacks, but it does get good coverage moves as well. We're likely going to see options like liquidation for its water type attack, having a 20% chance to lower the defense. But when you combine this with that sheer force ability, it will have a 30% boost to that base power. Additionally, crunch is a dog type attack that we could see. It does have the secondary effect that would play off that sheer force ability having that 20% chance to lower that defense stat. And although we don't have to worry about the secondary effects being applied in battle, we do have to worry about that base typing of these moves being boosted with sheer force. It does get coverage in things like Earthquake to cover things that might make it a bit difficult if we're looking to bring something like Iron Hands to this raid. Also getting access to another dark type attack in Lash Out as well. If its stats were lowered during this turn, the power of this move is doubled, going from base 75 to a base 150 attack power move. Obviously with that boost doing a lot of damage, so if you're relying on things like Screech, like Acid Spray in this raid, and it does go for the lash out, it's gonna be hitting for a lot of damage. Alligator gets access to some good setup options as well. In Screech, that lowers our defense by two stages if it does utilize that, increasing the attack power of those moves that it chooses to use against us. It also gets access to Sword Stance as well, a way to quickly boost its attack stat by two stages. And additionally, it gets Dragon Dance, which we may see it take advantage of where it boosts its attack and its speed by one stage every time it utilizes it. Rain Dance is something else that we may see it utilized to power up those water type attacks that we're definitely going to see. But outside of Metal Claw, it doesn't really have any steel coverage, which would be the one detriment to bringing any fairy types to this dark terror type for alligator. I think for alligator will turn out to be one of the more tougher seven star raids that we've seen in Scarlet and Violet, especially when you consider that base 105 attack stat. Combined with Cheer Force, it's going to be boosting those already strong attacking options by 30%. You're going to have to really concentrate on having ways to boost your own defense and weaken that attack stat on the Fralligator throughout the raid. It's not just about weakening defense stats and boosting your own attacking stats. You're going to have to have ways to extend your longevity so you can actually execute your plans. And I think that's something that we'll have to assess when the raid goes live, of course, like we normally do. But I have put some builds together in game that can potentially work going into this for alligator raid. So the builds that we're featuring in today's video, starting off with probably the strongest option. I do realize that this is a version exclusive to Scarlet, but I'm hoping by now, two years into Scarlet and Violet, all you Violet players have had the chance to maybe trade for a Cryodon. If you do have Cryodon, I do think it's going to be a good option this weekend. It's going to be level 100 and hyper train like the rest of the builds and they'll all be down in the description below. The terror typing here on the Corridor I'm going to be fighting going to be super effective against the dark terror typing on the Feraligator. Held item going to be the expert belt because we don't need a line of recovery because the move set is going to give us that option. It's going to be sunny day, screech, sword stance and drain punch. And the EV spread is going to be 252 EVs in HP and 252 EVs in attack with an adamant nature. Now, the ability Oracle Compulse is a big player here because it is going to bring the sun to the field as soon as you enter the battlefield. And this might be undone by a rain dance by the Feraligator, but then you do have the sunny day to also kind of set up to disrupt the rain. The sun is going to weaken those water type attacks. So that's going to be very useful, especially after you do terrestrialize. The basic idea of this set is going to be getting those screeches off, get that defense down to minus six. You can reduce it by two stages every time you use a screech. 
Then you can also power up your attack stat with the sword stance and then rely on the drain punch to recover health as and when you need it as well as doing some very good damage you can also maybe change the sword stance to bulk up if you prefer the defensive capabilities but i think with the build on the Coridon, I don't know if you'll need it. And I think maybe the Sword Lancer just expedites that attack stat boosting a little bit quicker, making it a very strong option. Next up is something I do think could do very well into this raid, and that is Polyrath Water Fighting Typing. The Terror Typing going to be Fighting. Held item here going to be the Expert Belt and the moveset going to be Belly Drum, Bulk Up, Haze and Drain Punch. The big thing here is the ability Water Absorb. So if the Frolligator does fire off any of those water type attacks, even after you Terrasalize, you'll be recovering health rather than taking damage. The EV spread is going to be 252 EVs in HP and in attack with an adamant nature. And the basic idea of this set is going to be to belly drum up. That's going to max out your attack. It is going to cut your HP in half. But then you've got the bulk ups as well that you can kind of rely on to bolster those defense stats. If we're seeing the Feraligator go for something like Swords Dance or those Dragon Dances that it has access to. And if it does get too carried away, if it nullifies the stats on our side of the field, you always have that haze where you can just throw it out onto the field, remove any stat changes on our side, its side, and then kind of start afresh, go for the belly drum again, and then use that drain punch to recover health, do big damage as well. But the Polyrath, it does feel like it could be a good option, especially when you consider that dog type moves are going to be resisted by you because of the fighting type, even after you terrestrialize, and then you've got the water absorbed to have that effect full immunity from those water type attacks that could be coming out and be quite threatening. Azumarill is probably something that you've already thought about. It's got the perfect typing for this dark type for alligator. It's going to resist the water type attacks. It's also going to resist those dark type attacks that could come out. Fairy terror typing, of course, here. Shell Bell is the held item for a line of recovery in the raid. Moveset is going to be Charm, Belly Drum, Chilling Water, and Play Rough. You can see we're really focusing down on reducing that attack stat of the Frolligator throughout the raid. The ability here, the big important thing is huge power, going to double the attack stat on the Azumarill, making us hit harder, and an EV spread of 252 EVs in attack and in defense. The basic idea, again, is going to be probably early on firing off those chilling waters, get three of those fired off before you can terrestrialize, then get a belly drum when the moment is right, and then just finish the raid up with player roughs. In hindsight, this works perfectly, but of course we all know that doesn't always work out, but Azumarill could be a good option going in this weekend. Next up is going to be Toxicroak. I do actually really like this one, and it's a different one. We've had a lot of physical attackers here. This is going to be primarily a special attacker and could be quite a fast way to run through the raid. Fighting Terror type again here, Shell Bell of the Held item for a line of recovery. The moveset is going to be Nasty Plot, Taunt, Acid Spray and Terror Blast. We've got the ability here, big important ability, Dry Skin, going to give you immunity to those water type attacks. And again, it's going to heal you if you do take any damage from those attacks from Feraligator. EV spread here is going to be 252 EVs in HP and then 252 EVs in Special Attack. With a modest nature, the basic idea here is probably drop a taunt turn one. That's going to prevent the Feraligator from going for sword stances, from dragon dances, or any other set of options. And then fire off those acid sprays. Every time you use it, it's going to reduce the special defense on the Feraligator by two stages. It will work through the shield as well. So if the shield goes up early on, it's going to work through that. Then we're going to go for those three nasty plots. So the Feraligator's special defense is minus six. Our special attack is plus six. And then we're going to fire those Terra Blasts off after we can Terrasalize. The beauty about this as well is the Acid Sprays kind of tick down our Terrasalization counter. So by the time we've used three Acid Sprays, we should be able to Terrasalize. So that Terra Blast will always be a fighting type move, doing big damage. And the Toxicroak with that Dry Skin could actually be a pretty sleeper option this weekend. So keep an eye out for it. It's definitely one worth testing. And finally, we'll wrap up with Iron Hands. It's probably a build you already have in your game. It's done well against previous 7-star Terror Raid Pokemon. And again, it's going to do well into the dark typing in theory. Fighting Terror type PS Scope Lens as the held item and the moveset of Iron Defense, Belly Drum, Focus Energy and Drain Punch. Walk Drive, the ability, we can't change that. EV spread is 252 EVs in HP and attack with an adamant nature. And again, like we've seen with other raids, the basic idea is turn one, we're going to go for a belly drum, turn two, focus energy, then essentially fire off those drain punches. We might have to mix things up here, go for an iron defense turn one, then the belly drum, then the focus energy, and then fire off those drain punches, depending on how the raid interacts. But we'll know more when the raid goes live, but I do think iron hands, considering that a lot of you probably already have this built in game, 
it's going to be a really good option. But between that, the Cryodon, potentially the Toxicroak, and maybe then the Outliers of the Polyrath and the Azumarill, are the initial ones that I'm looking at to do well into this Feraligand when it goes live later this week. Of course, when the raid goes live later this week, we'll be able to do a testing phase and then put out a best solo build so you have an easier time going up against Feraligator for the time that it's running. Some of these builds might work, but some of them may not as well. As we know, the interactions of the raid can change a lot. The moveset selection as well can change a lot with other Feraligator will play in real time. If you've got any ideas though about what you think will do well against the Feraligator, do leave them in the comment section down below and we'll start the discussion there. It'd be great to hear what you think in preparation for this seven star raid. If you've enjoyed today's video, do drop a like, do subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all of our Pokemon Scarlet and Violet content. Thank you so much for tuning in friends. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you all in another video very soon. So until then, take care and bye-bye.